G'day and welcome, my name's Cautious Pancake and today I want to see if I can build a base that resembles those pictures of infinite stairs that you may have seen, where the characters on them just walk around and around, and the staircase seems to constantly loop on itself. Since they are built on an optical illusion, and I don't think 7 days to die physics is that broken, I'm not sure how we'll go, but let's give it a shot. To start with, let's put together a 5x5 pillar where we can stand for the Horde Knight. Then we need to mark out the outer ring, it needs to be 11 blocks away from that central pillar. For those that have seen my Rage Mode video, you'll know why. For those that haven't, well, you're missing out. Once that's marked out, it will look like this, and we can move on to connecting up the outer parts to form a square. Now that we've got our square, let's expand it out to three blocks wide, so that the zombies have room to path around each other if there's an obstruction. We then need to add two layers on top to form a three block high platform, so that the zombies are forced up here to hopefully stay on the staircase. Now we need to add a basic staircase so that the zombies can climb up, And that's the core structure done. Now we just need to figure out the stairs bit. The basic part of the stairs is to increase the height by half a block every nine blocks or so. So we come in nine blocks with a half block, then from the other end, come back nine blocks and go up to a full block and repeat that as we move around. Now, while we build that out, the staircase needs to do two things. First, it needs to give the zombies a way to get to us as without that, there's no reason for them to run around the outside track They'll just jump off and come smash on the central pillar. Second, after giving them a way to get to us, we need to break that in a way that the zombies will still think that they can get to us, but can't obviously, and where they will stay on the track. I don't want to have them jump or fall down into the middle of the space. If possible, I want them to stay on the track at all times and just keep going around and around. Alright, and that's our first half of the staircase done. Let's just jump over to the side here and have a look. As you can see, the zombies will come up all the way around to the middle point here. We could then build some sort of path across the middle, and then ideally, the staircase will go back down this side and meet up at the beginning. I think that'll make it look like most like the pictures that you've seen. What we need to do next is build that connection diagonal ramp pathway from here over to our central pillar. To do that, I'm just going to jerry-rig up something very basic to begin with, I think. We'll just come down here and pop in some blocks. Let's just start from the inside track here, we'll move across and just, I think, wiggle our way in. I'm going to cheat and use God Mode flying. Wiggle our way in on the diagonal like this. When we hit stability problems, we'll whack in a pillar. This is just so we can sort of see and prove out the concept. Sure, we connect it up. There we are. And a couple of blocks so we can get up. That should give us a nice connected pathway for the zombies. If I pop the camera out now, we can then go over and bring in our few test subjects. Using ferrules so it's not too slow. They'll come up the staircase. And hopefully they will run straight around rather than trying to jump down and bash on the central pillar. There's the other two, they're okay. And running along the inside. So that works. The only problem obviously is that they can get directly to us. So that's the part that we need to fix next. We want to add a bit of a drop off block so that the zombies will fall down and hopefully run in a nice big loop. Today for that, I'm going to use this pole plate half block. 
pop one there. And what idea is this is to sort of rotate from low to high and back again. In this case, high to low. So that just starts off there, swinging around, and that's the furthest away on the low block. The zombies will see, still see this as a connected path, but the distance between them will hopefully make them fall off. It's not a very good example because it's on the corner like that, so they will probably make it no problem. But if we can get at least one to fall down, then we can prove out the concept. Okay, that's not what they're supposed to do. <laughs> they're supposed to have gone back around. What's going on here? Ah, we built it too low. So they see that low block over there as something that they can get up onto. So rather than running around, they are going to do that. So to fix that, we just need to go up one. If we start that first block at the level above the current blocks, then we should be okay. There we go. That should be okay. Let's try that again. Fingers crossed they run up this way this time. And not off to the left. There we go. That's much better. Running, running, running. And again, some of them will make it across. It's not the best pathway. But as long as one falls down, hopefully. Come on. There we go. Get rid of the rest of them. And he's going to run all the way around, hopefully. And turn left and do it again. Perfect. So that's what we're after. This is this sort of loop concept. Now obviously this needs some work because he's going to jump over and make it across again. We don't want that many zombies getting to us. But that's the concept. From here we need to work out how to make our pathway go back down again. And this is going to be the tricky part. So if we want this stairway to look seamless, these need to be solid blocks. So if we put them in like that, the problem is, is how do we make a drop when it's all at the same height? Now you could start to make bring it down by half block, but even that is going to look... Uh, sorry, it's going to look right, but it's only going to give us a half block to work with, which isn't enough for the zombies to fall down. So I don't know how we're going to drill this out to make it work right. With the, with the staircase going back down again on the second half after coming up on the first half. As you can see, if we go down half a block, that still doesn't give us enough drop off to do anything significant with the zombies. So what we might need to do instead is get rid of these half blocks. We need to fill that back up again with full blocks and we might need the stairway. Instead of going down, we might need it to continue going up and getting taller. So we'll mark out the nine blocks in and we'll go up two and we'll turn that into two and a half blocks. Oops, that's wrong. We need that up a little bit higher. We'll make that two and a half blocks tall from here. And then we'll continue over and go up and up and up all the way around. As you can see here, we've now finished the stairway going up only. And it goes up and up and up all the way around. Obviously, we've deviated a little bit from the pictures, but I think this is a more workable design. And if you come around here and look at it from the right angle, it doesn't look too far off. Still looks pretty good in terms of that infinite staircase feel. From here though, the advantage of this is we've got a nice big height differential between this part of the base and the original staircase below. So what we can do now is use that pole plate half block and build our up and down path that the zombies tend to fall down on. Starting from here, each way across, build the other rotation that attaches up. There we go. And from there we need to go probably drop down, use some of our frames just to give us some height to work with. There we go. And then we can attach it through. But for this one, we want to use the low. So we just got to rotate around. There we go. That's the furthest position away. And then rotate it back. And there's that one done. We can continue that across and just keep doing that until we get over to where we want to bring it across towards the base. We might actually also start to run into some stability issues. 
Yeah, there we go. As you can see, it's not quite where I want it. I want the path coming off that central pillar because again, we do need the path to connect up to our, I'll call it a combat pillar, but we're probably not gonna do a lot of combat. So we just need to bring this up now, bring it up to the height that we need. I think it's about seven or eight blocks. One more, I think. And from there, if we bring that across, we can start to build out our pathway. And we'll bring this across from the stability provided by the central pillar. We should be able to extend it out pretty much all the way to the stairway. There we go. Now we just need to add some stability, I think. So we'll drop down and run underneath. What we don't want to do is add a pillar here because the zombies will be able to smash that as they go past. So you want to just bring it back a little bit. It doesn't really matter where as long as it's relatively close. That should give us the stability we need. The other thing while we're here, what we might do is also give ourselves and the zombies a bit of an escape route. Just do a hole in the wall here. Easy when you're using the dev tools, of course. That way, any zombies that do happen to fall down into that middle area will be able to get back out and join back up, just like we do. Put it the cube there, and then we need the plate half block again. Oh, and I'm a little bit high. That's the problem. That's why it doesn't look right. Might have to fix that up in a minute. Um, but for now, we can rotate that around, put that up the top, and put another one there and that's connected up. They'll still be able to hop up from that, that's no problem. Since night's fallen, we might just head back inside. Obviously to get inside, we can follow the same path that the zombies do. Head all the way around and then jump across these. That's one of the things I like about this path. Even though it's not good for zombies, it's really quite simple for us to hop across. Okay, good morning. So overnight, we've done a bit of work. I've lowered this path down so it's nice and seamless and matches it across. I've also cleaned up all of the area in the middle, got rid of some of the yucca plants and bits of broken wood, put an arch on the zombie hole just to make it look a little bit prettier and got rid of the diagonal zigzaggy path that we originally built for testing. So that means we can now do our testing by summoning zombies in the middle. They'll be able to get out, jump back up, and this should hopefully show that our pathing is working. The fact that they've run into the outside is a good sign. It means that they want to follow the path that we've given them rather than just again coming over and smashing on the central pillar. They're going to run all the way around. And here's the important bit. Do they fall down? There we go. That's looking good. It's not quite as clean as running down a staircase. But this way they still think they can get to us. They still stay on the track. The fall's not big enough to do any damage to them. So that's good. We're not going to have any problems with cops blowing up due to fall damage. So they're just going to keep running around over and over again. Next step is to give us a bit of protection from any cop spit or from any vultures that might come. We're going to build a basic base, just a little cube shelter. What we can do is just put a wall, We're going to go up about three blocks and then put a roof on top. So we've got a nice roomy space inside. And then we might just do a very basic hatchway base. It's not one that I tend to use much in game, but it certainly does the job. And it suits this sort of base very well, where we can use the same entrance as the zombies, and we can just use the hatch to open and close that. We're not really expecting any of them to come across on this. They're just gonna loop around the, our infinite staircase over and over again. So it doesn't matter if our defensible position is a particularly complicated or simple one. Drop in our ladder here so that we've got a way up to the roof. Extend that down. There we go. Pop in some railings, I think. Do one on the outside and one on the inside. And then we might just grab a iron hatch I think that's all working. Must be time for a horde. So for our first horde night, I've made a couple of minor changes and that's just to add in some spotlights so that we can see what's going on. 
put a little generator bank up the top here. Let's turn that on, get the lights on, and let's set the time to our first horde night. This is running warrior difficulty on 64 zombies, but because of our game stage and low number of days, we're probably not going to get the full 64 zombies in, but that's fine. This is just to show that when you do start getting zombies in, they're just going to run around over and over again. It'll also show how much damage they do to the base, if any, and it's just a good little test to see how things go. See, we've already got zombies falling down and looping around. They join in with the ones that are just coming up, so that's fine. You can also see how the zombies tend to form a bit of a conga line behind the uh, the slow mows over there. Here comes one. It's got three behind him. Same with the next. It's got a few zombies climbed up. They all seem to group up like that. I think I did hear a bit of a whack. I think when the zombies fall down here if they stand on one of those other zombies heads there is the potential i think for them to give it a bit of a swing and hit that pathway we've also got a mo stuck down here having a few hits on the staircase could potentially clean that up with an extra corner block there just to make that easier but it doesn't seem to have caused too much problem it's a big group there we go. Ooh, one made it a few across. So we do just need to keep an eye on that. See if any of them make it all the way across. That would be interesting. But so far so good. Occasionally they fall down in the middle there. When they fall down, they're just looking around and starting again. No trouble. Now obviously you don't have to fully AFK it. If you want to take some pot shots from up here, you can. For those of you, which is probably most of you, that are a better shot than me, that's something that you can probably do. I'm not a particularly good shot, as I just demonstrated twice. So I'm at this distance without a scope anyway. I'm not going to really try and do much combat. This is more the sort of base to sit back and enjoy. At least with this configuration, we might try some other options out after this. But as you can see, it works a treat. Zombies will just infinitely run around this staircase, looping over and over and over again all the Horde night. So what we might do now is just settle in and keep an eye on the zombies and speed things up a little bit and see how it goes. And there is Horde Night over. Finally, <laughs> it takes a long time when you're just sitting here watching it. Anyway. Since this is just a quick test, I am not going to try and kill them all myself. Now we could shoot them all from here, but that's going to take a little while. So why don't we just kill them all? And what we might do next is grab a hammer once the game loads. And let's go check what damage they did. Turn that off, and I'm not expecting much along here, if any, maybe a couple of wax. There we go. So that's lost 23, 20, no, 12 health. That one's copped a few. Can't do that math, but 20. So that what block there is one that copped the most, which makes sense as that's the one that's effectively blocking most of the zombies. So if you're ever gonna reinforce a block, that's the one to convert to concrete or to steel. Down below, we've only lost eight health on that block. I don't expect a lot along these paths, even though this is where all the zombies go. They don't tend to have a hit too much. Four health, eight health. And I think there was one more. Yep, six health. So very little damage to the core staircase. And we know that there was a bit down here. So that mo that hit that one was probably the only one given that there's only eight health down. The rest of those stairs are fine. And I'm pretty sure there was also some whacking on the inside wall here every now and then. Yeah, there's 40 odd, 40 odd. 
nothing 50 odd so a little bit of damage there but only about 50 on a few blocks same there and no damage to our support pillar and no damage that i can see oh one that might have been pre-existing i'm not sure two one there a couple of tiny nicks on our central pillar so yeah has survived cobblestone base with very very little damage just that one block on the up and down stairway that is of concern all right so we've done the afk version with that early horde why don't we try a day 70 horde with a little bit more combat what we've done here is we've added in 12 smg turrets to cover the staircase we've gone advanced engineering so that we get 20% XP from electrical trap kills. So we'll get a little bit of XP from this, not a lot. I expect it'll chew through an absolute mountain of ammo. But let's find out. And we'll also see if it can actually deal with the horde. Oh, I'm kind of curious to sort of sit back, not do any of the combat, and see what happens. The culture comes in straight away, and we didn't actually have them turned on. Certainly lighting up right from the word go. I think they can even see the zombies before they make it up onto the staircase. And these front SMG turrets where the zombies first come up are going to be the ones that probably do the most damage. Oh, sorry, do the most damage but also go through the most ammo and probably run out before anything else. The advantage of having all the turrets up here with us is that we can reload them if we had spare ammo. For this one, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to see how the SMG turrets cope. Given it's day 70, we should have the full cohort of 64 zombies. At least, if the zombie spawning can keep up with the SMG turrets, that is. I get the feeling watching this that that's not going to happen. Oh, and there goes that vulture. So there's... SMG turrets will cover us even though we've got no roof, hopefully from any vultures coming through as well. Okay, now that we've seen the base in action, let's go out and check for damage reports again. We'll go grab our hammer. There we go. And do a quick lap. Mostly looks like fairly low damage there. The highest damage I think will be the ones that have hit the cop spit. These ones along here that I'm assuming the most of that damage is from SMG fire, although it could just be random hits. Here we go, this is where the cop blew up, so that's probably our biggest amount of damage. Here on the corner where there's only one, MS one SMG turret covering that spot. Not too much damage, particularly over this side where very very few zombies made it. And the sort of bridge across here looks pretty good. The other thing to check after that run is how much ammo did we go through? I expect these front turrets are, yep, completely out of ammo. 
off to the side has hardly used anything on this fourth side of the staircase. At the back there's moderate usage. Obviously that just increases as we get around back towards the front where all the ammo's gone. So not a very efficient way of fighting off the horde, but it does kill all of them before the end of horde night and you don't actually have to do anything. You can just AFK the whole thing. All right, so let's jump into a quick tip. One of the options you've got to do, save a bit of materials if you want, is when you're building this first layer in particular, rather than putting down nine blocks, use one of the three by three by one blocks, which will cover the same area with a single block. So it's a nine times saving or an eight times saving. It's a little tricky to put down as you can see, but once you get it in place, it looks just like the rest of it. The only difference being is if you hit it with a hammer or do a little bit of damage, it immediately goes to that sort of looking heavily damaged cracks through it. A bit hard to see on the cobble, as opposed to normal blocks, which don't do that until they're a lot more significantly damaged. The other downside will be is if you lose a block, obviously you lose a nine or three by three grid of blocks, as opposed to losing a single block, which could put your pathing at risk. Okay, second tip is if you do want to do this base as an AFK base, but then you get to the end of Horde Night and you don't want to just try and pick off all of the zombies as they run around. You know, if you shoot like me and you're not a very good shot and you want them to come to you, this is an option. What you need to do is build a new pathway across, just working down some blocks like this. You need to leave a gap of two at the end. And if we just quickly grab a door, any old door will do. Put this in horizontally, like so. Open it up. You can do the whole horde night, AFK as usual, like this. Just going to bring in some zombies to demonstrate. You can see that they ignore the path, just like usual. Follow the little up and down blocks and fall down and continue running around, just like they always would. But say that you've just hit the end of Horde Night, what you can do is come over here, close the door, that completes the path that's a shorter path for the zombies, so they'll want to come through. Make sure that we're set up and ready. And then this time, rather than taking the up and down blocks, they'll take the new shorter path. And then we can just finish off all of those zombies for a Horde Night as they come towards us. Once they're done, you're free to go. Another tip for this base is you can turn it into a crafting base on top. This is a pretty ugly build, I will admit, but it shows the concept. We did put in some extra poles in these corners to give some extra stability. But here we've got the usual SMG turret level, that's unchanged. Above it though, we've built an extra room for our storage of our mats and crafting materials. And we've got a small little crafting room on top. I put some windows in just for fun. And we've still got rooftop access in case you wanted to put an SMG turret or some wood spikes or something up there for the vultures. Another way to use the SMG turrets is if you wanted to AFK the Horde Knight and you're not too worried about the little bit of experience, then what you can do is just wait for the end of Horde Knight. And then, if you've wired all your SMG turrets to a switch, hit that. And watch the zombies get taken care of. The difference here being is that once it's past 4am, you're not going to get any more respawns for the board. So you can just take care of them once, and you'll then be free to go. Checking the ammo usage, you'll find it's a whole lot lighter, obviously, because you're not running at the whole not horde night. 50 off that one, 50 off that one. It do sound like we might have woken up a screamer, so that's something to keep in mind. 40 on that one, 50 on that one. So it's kind of a good way to finish, but not if you're going to bring on screamers. Just be aware that you might need to run away from them. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to build an AFK Infinity Stairs base, and that it provides another idea for a horde base to use on your next playthrough of Seven Days to Die. Please consider dropping me a like, and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Thanks as always for watching, and don't forget to make sure you don't lose a block from the up and down half plate section, or this might happen.